Listen to this. More people suffer heart attacks the last week of December than any time of the year. It's the last week of December. Uh, here to break down why, Dr. Craig Larson with Sharp Memorial Hospital. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, so what is the reason for this? Is it stress and just everything else? We talk about this every year yeah. and it comes up. And what we see is the latest data shows that there's you know cold weather. Here in San Diego, not so much cold, but cold weather causes vasoconstriction. Um, that reduces blood flow, um, but the stress of the holidays yeah. and the overindulgence that we all go through really does lead to a lot of this. And we see it peaks on the 25th, the 26th, and oh the 1st. Wow. And so, you know, those days are coming up. Like how much of a peak? Are we talking like a big increase? That's just so... There's recent data, I think out of Europe, that really kind of looked at this and they, 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 they show the trend as... Wow. Yeah being the 25th, 26th, and 1st. Are there signs that people should look out for? I mean, I've, I've talked to some people who have gone through something with the heart, and from what they were saying, they're like, Sholly, it was like just like a normal day, or it was mm. just like a mm -hmm. heartburn or something, and they didn't even think about it. It learned out, later turned out to be something very serious. You have to listen to your body, and if you're noticing chest pain, shortness of breath, there's right. a lot of symptoms that can be involved, fainting, lightheadedness, um, abnormal pains in the chest or arms, uh, don't ignore them. Go see your doctor. And I think that's one of the leading reasons why people tend not to, uh, or you see these increases, because around the holidays, people don't want to go to the doctor. Mm. They don't want to focus course, on yeah. themselves. They're focused on everyone else. Yeah. Focus on yourself. Don't put it off. Go see your physician. It, it's so strange that, because, you know, if you watch a lot of TV and movies, a heart attack, all dramatic and everything else, but people can actually have a heart attack and not even know it. It can be very that's, subtle. That's incredible. And, and when it's subtle and you kind of dismiss it, it leads to bigger things and bigger problems, right? That's correct. And many patients go on not having these symptoms, and they can end up with heart failure because the events have happened oh, solely goodness. over time, um, which is one of the reasons why we've uh, created our heart and lung clinic mm -hmm. uh, at Sharp Memorial, open this week. Um, we focus on heart failure patients in particular and um, provide uh, venues for them to get their heart failure taken care of, uh, which could include transplant uh, ventricular assist devices or advanced heart therapies. Well, this is a silly question. So like this morning, I could feel like something in right here. <laughs> I don't like that can't be anything, but can you describe what it's like to actually, the difference between what you might just feel it's nothing but an actual heart attack? What does that feel like? It can be different for a lot of people, but the most common complaints are somebody saying, I have an elephant sitting on my so chest. Really feel uh, pressure. Heavy. Yeah. And, and so it can be, and it can radiate to the arm, it could radiate to the jaw. There can be different things associated. So if you're, if you're noticing it, many of things are musculoskeletal. Those can be dismissed. They go away with some ibuprofen right. or, or, or some other modality. But this will not go away, and it will continue to happen, especially with exertion. Is it still, when I grew up, it's like, oh, if you're left, something on your yeah. left side, on your left mm -hmm. side, is that still uh, the thing? thing? It can be, yes. Oh, my goodness. There's so many things. <laughs> doctors so like, yes, know. everything you're saying. Uh, how can people celebrate safely? I mean, I, we don't, we don't want to panic anybody during no. the holidays, but also, look, listen, it's like you said it yourself. Listen to your body. If something's uh, off, take care of it. So mm -hmm. what can people do during the holidays? Just make sure you're doing it safely. Moderation is important. Sure. If you have doctor's appointments, go to them. Don't put them off. If you are seeing, uh, or if you're getting together with your family, yeah. don't overindulge. Indulge. Sure. Everyone's going to enjoy their time with their family. You should do so. But yeah. emotional swings can be very high, and that can lead to a lot of depression and stress, yeah. uh, which you don't need. Heart disease also affects a lot of women. A it lot does. of women, right? Is that, was it the number one or number two cause of death for women? It, it's still the number one cause of death um, in men and women oh, wow. around the world. And we see this, um, it, it, it's not gender specific. And it's been ignored for a long time because their symptoms were often different. But we've noticed this now. And there's a greater push to be aware of women in heart disease. It's important to get a checkup for your lungs, too. Is, is what they say because it's just it all kind of works together obviously right but how do you just do you just make an appointment to say i want to check my lungs i want to check my heart or do you have to wait for something to be off or what, what's the suggestion? so the biggest link between the heart and lungs i think is smoking smoking leads to heart disease mm -hmm. it also is a major is the leading risk factor for cancer doesn't have to be the only risk factor for cancer many people are diagnosed 
with lung cancer who've never smoked a day in their life. And the important thing to note is we have, as the other half of our lung clinic, yeah. or our heart and lung clinic, is the lung side, where we are performing screenings. Um, if you're a candidate for screenings, if you're a smoker, if you've been a smoker, you may be a candidate between the ages of 50 and 80, um, get that checkup. Right. Because the earlier we diagnose you with lung cancer, the earlier we can treat you and give you the best long-term outcomes. Tell you what, I'm one of those people. If I suspect anything, anything. I'm calling <laughs> you up, I'm coming. I don't care if they say this is nothing, no. it's a headache. Take, it's like the greatest matter. gift you Take can give yourself. yourself Absolutely. is your gift of taking care of your own health. Dr. Craig you know? Larson with Sharp Memorial, we thank you. Thank, thank you for all you. the work you do also. We appreciate it. Happy holidays. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks Happy holidays. Thank you. Yeah.